Welcome to another exciting episode of The Trading Bell. Today on the program, we're coming to you from the capital here in Nairobi, and we are going to be speaking to the Group Managing Director of Kenya Commercial Bank, that is Mr. Joshua Oigara. The bank has just reported its earnings for this year, and he'll be taking us through what this means for the bank, and of course, their unrelenting appetite to expand into the region. He'll be expounding this for us in a short while. But first, let's take a look at his profile. Joshua Oigara, CBS, is a member of the KCB Group PLC and KCB Bank Kenya boards, as well as the KCB Group Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director. He is the chairman of the Energy and Regulatory Commission of Kenya, a director of the Vision 2030 Delivery Board, and he was commended by His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta on the award of Chief of the Order of the Burning Spear, CBS, for exemplary service to the people and nation of Kenya. He is also the chairman Kenya Bankers Association, the banking industry lobby. Listed as one of Africa's top 25 leaders to watch based on his role to champion transformational leadership and change on the continent by the Financial Times, Joshua actively engages at national and industry levels to drive this agenda. Joshua was named among the top 100 youngest and most influential economic leaders in Africa. He was recently named CEO of the Year in East Africa by The Banker Africa and captains the largest indigenous bank in the East African region with assets of over $6.5 billion and a market capitalization of over $1.4 billion. Thank you so much, Mr. Joshua Igara, for speaking to us on the Trading Bell. It's been a minute. Thank you for welcoming me to the Trading Bell. But I'm again, at this, I was with you some time back. Yeah. It's one of my favorite shows that I, that I like to participate in and also watch. Fantastic. Looking young as ever and managing the bank into greater territory, talk to us about the numbers. We've seen a very impressive return on uh, the bank's uh, correct, books. Correct. Uh, close to 131% percent jump in uh, net profits. It's been, uh, I would say, first remembering that we are recovering from uh, one of the most difficult health crises we've ever faced in our generation. Yeah. I must salute first our clients of the bank for standing very strongly with us. Uh, this is the strongest rebound we have seen in now for the last 20 months. And, and I'm proud to say that uh, our results demonstrate the resilience of our customers, the economies we operate in. We've also bring on board our new bank in Rwanda, the bank populated Rwanda, which is a new acquisition we made. And if you look at our overall income at 25.2 billion, which is uh, up 131 uh, percent, because we are increasing our size of bank, we have grown from our loans are expanding, larger customers, medium enterprises. We've seen our fee and commission increase. Actually, our total income is up 16% to share of 80 billion, 79.9 billion to be specific. Our total balance sheet is way ahead of a trillion. Is today up 15% or 16% to 1.12 trillion. Yeah. So that, that momentum shows all sectors recovering in terms of our businesses. That area for me is where the excitement part is, that we see every single sector hitting back. And I would say that that demonstration reflects the resilience and recovery. There are some areas that we continue to see slow growth, but I would say the first nine months of the year demonstrate the strength of our institution to support our customers. We have also in the last few months from the month of July continued to work very specifically and deliberately to small enterprises, provided them facilities in excess of 30 to 40 billion shillings just to push their momentum as they reopen their businesses. Fantastic numbers indeed. And uh, looking at these uh, numbers, uh, a net profit of over 25.2 billion shillings. And uh, talk to us about uh, where are you seeing growth post-COVID recovery? Because banks have also had to increase their provisioning, considering that we've had a number of reforms, especially when it comes to delisting of borrowers who are defaulted. So, so this is a new, I would say the new, is a new area. The last change, and I'll speak to it maybe much later, yeah. on the CRBs uh, and the new communications. But the growth has been largely from four, four areas. So our, our loan book momentum, which is what banks do like ourselves, so we're large consumer lending. So that has been a very, doesn't stopped even during the pandemic. Yeah. Uh, people started doing other businesses. People started doing other, a side business. 
we saw new entrepreneurs coming to market. Our mobile lending has continued to grow strongly. It's on the highest recovery part today, more than 20% year on year. Our own SME businesses, I said, we've seen a 30 uh, to 40 billion shillings growth in, the, in terms of our lending this year. Actually, last month, we had one of our strongest SME, SME uh, lending portfolio. I would say that on those areas we've seen, in terms of sectors, majority of them, so constructions, we've seen a lot of work coming through. Infrastructure, you're seeing it going through. Yeah. Education has been a very strong recovery area. Our schools went back uh, and also rebuilding on the lost effort and time that they had. We've seen telecommunications remaining very strong trading areas, so manufacturing as well. What we haven't seen coming strongly is hospitality and hotels. Yeah, but as we all know, tourism, yes, as vaccination increases, uh, but I'm proud to see the local tourists. Uh -huh. Yeah, I struggled to get uh, a space in Mombasa just a month ago, correct? Because we saw a number of places are getting, and I'm sure as we go into December, but it's not just a Kenyan situation. Across the region, tourism is taking longer to recover. But let me tell you, uh, you know, again, that I was in a place in Europe just the other day, and where I stayed, we were 100%. So we must also take a long-term view. Not every recovery happens at the same time. So all aspects of our businesses are actually strengthening. And for me, that is important to see the recovery. Now, is everybody recovering at the same pace? The answer is no. But we have also extended additional lines. So what banks did is to provide accommodation additional moratoriums and that has more or less come to an end and so provisions yes continue to increase yeah because some business are taking much longer mm -hmm. but the level of provisions today like us is much lower than it was we are now at eight billion compared to where we were last year, which was close to 20 billion for nine months. All right. And uh, Joshua, of course, uh, you're not only based in Kenya, but you have a very interesting footprint across the region. Just walk us through how are the other subsidiaries performing, especially now that we're seeing a lot of interest in some of these markets within this side of the Sahara. So one, one value I like about our business today is the diversification of our businesses today. So if you look at our regional businesses outside KCB Kenya, their performance in terms of their profit before tax is up by more than 100%. There's not a single business today that has not delivered more than double-digit growth. You know, we have record performance in Rwanda, even without the new acquisition in Tanzania, in Burundi, in South Sudan. So, so all those areas have worked, and even in Uganda. So that gives you a very good momentum about what we see in the region. Now, the region was not affected the same like we saw in COVID. So yeah. I would say Tanzania had a different experience. Yeah, because when you sit here, and this is the benefit of running a business within an ecosystem of a region. Yes, we are one brothers and sisters, yeah. but the experience are different. Tanzania had a difficulty in COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda had a very difficult area. Uganda is still on some lockdown today with difficulties, but we have grown our business. So I would say... The momentum for our region today, 15%, correct, all of our earnings or profit before tax is coming from the region. We anticipate to make it 20% uh, in the next year, yeah, for me. And then as we go into 2023, we intend to achieve 25%. All so right. the region is firing very strongly in all aspects uh, of their business areas. All right. And uh, Mr. Igara, of course, uh, many of the analysts in the banking sector are saying, the cheese has moved. There's a new disruption, especially when it comes to digital lending. Correct. And uh, this has not only helped accelerate where we would have seen financial institutions headed, but we are seeing a sort of transformation. Talk to us about the impact of digital channels as Correct. a bank that has a strong presence, especially when it comes to reaching to the millennials who Correct. are always on their phones, getting the money out of their money wallets, and off they go. You know, I'll, I'll give you some data that will perhaps change the way analysts look at the financial sector. The greatest catalyst of digital transformations today and the greatest lenders for mobile are financial institutions. You know, as KCB today, and, and if you look at our, our colleague bank, uh, NCBA, we're the two single largest lender on mobile loans up to 90% of the market share. So it's also good to look at the, 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 the because we have products like KCB Mobile Loans, which yeah. you offer. We have the KCB M-Pesa product that we offer, and we also have a Fuliza product we offer collectively. Now, our partnership with Safaricom has been very instrumental in driving the, catalyzing the innovation we see in terms of financial services. 
Has the sector been changed? Of course, yes. Financial services, as we call them, financial technology or fintechs, Correct. are every day attacking the NAF center of the financial services sector, and it's banking as we knew it. So today, 98% of our transactions are all happening outside the branch. That's how it, that's at the end of September. Now, if we are not in that, and we've invested significantly, we invested today in addition of 30 billion shillings, correct, in the last 10 years. In the last two years, we made in addition three to four billion shillings to make sure we have the right platforms. So we have relaunched our VUMA payment platform we have. We've had a new gateway created, an API gateway that links our customers into the bank or all the other partners we want to make. Yeah. But my answer to you is simple, that you are very right in terms of the disruptions. So millennials, many of them will come to us through a mobile phone or a mobile device, whichever yeah. form. Yeah. And we can deliver both on the smartphones and on the, and on the future phones. Either way, they'll be able to be diagnostics. And that is the only way. That we believe that half of our business in terms of revenue in the next three years will come from the digital financial services. That's what we see. And so banks like us who are invested in that area will be able to champion and lead the market. Uh, and if we don't, then we'll not be able to be in that market. And finally, I would say the future for fintech is collaboration. Correct? Yeah. So because of our size, we, we would not say that we are the only one with the knowledge to build innovation in this segment. There are big techs, large companies globally going into payments. There are also startups yeah, who are very diagnostic and they're also very agile. Yeah. So those are the ones we are also working with today. I can give you some example. We're working with someone like Pesapal. This is a large digital acquirer today that is very progressive. Yeah, most of them, you've seen them in the market. So that, if you build a convention where you're doing ability for us to work together, that may be the winning spot between the integration of financial services and technology. And uh, Mr. Egara, taking me deeper into this issue is the fact that uh, currently, as we are designed as a community, as a country, the uptake for digital loans is skyrocketing. Correct. We did see uh, the latest numbers from Safaricom's results where Fuliza, one of their overdraft products, uh, did exponentially well, looking at 1.34 billion shillings being taken per day. And this is testament to really what is happening out there. And I'd like to hear your thoughts around how do we structure more and more uh, products in a manner that we reduce the risk because if you look at the repayment, it's at 98 percent. Correct. Mm, we've never seen this kind of revolution. So, so I mean, we are together with the Safaricom uh, on Fuliza as a product. Uh, you know, we we're one of the banks that is lending in that in, in, in the platform that we have together collectively uh, with, with with NCBA. Yeah. I would say that overall, will we see more growth in the mobile lending? Yes, we will see um, because 1.3 billion per day. When the product was launched a few years ago, uh, which is 2019, yeah. uh, we didn't anticipate. <laughs> we had thought, well, maybe 100 million, 200 million. Mm -hmm. But credit is something that, see, one thing that we need to appreciate about providing credit is credit is a key enabler for progress and enterprise. Now, you can get credit in many ways. You can get equity from mm -hmm. someone like me or Abi who's saying, I want to invest. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to a lender and saying, give me a loan to build my enterprise. Because our saving levels in the continent are not as high. So you can see that as a key driver. What do we need to do? And the payment experience is very good for, for mobile loans. I think what needs to happen from our view is th there's today more than 100 lenders on mobile loans in our market. And, and the behavior is not consistent. So there's need today for a stronger oversight by the Central Bank of Kenya. And, I, and you can see there is already a regulation in parliament. There is already a law in parliament. Correct. Isn't that's yeah. what we need to do? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we see a lot of experiences. All our products, and I'll speak very strongly for KCB and also all the lenders, are approved from their pricing, their features, and their specifications by the central bank. All products, including Fuliza. Yeah, but not all digital products. And what I will ask customers is to also see, yeah, because our pricing is very much uh, regulated. You know, we are at 5%, 6%, 7%. We have lenders today at 20% in the market. That's so true. customers must choose also mm -hmm. and say, what am I paying for? Because you know your credit history. So that model, I think, is one area I would say that we need to be, customers need to be very much aware. Our product always says regulated by the central. If you watch closely, it's always said regulated by the Central Bank of Kenya. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I believe that credit will continue to grow. Are we at the level to say that there is, you know, over lending to the mobile loans today? Uh, my view is that still we have scope 
to grow the businesses. I always say that lending must be a percentage of GDP. So most global economies are at parity, mm -hmm. correct? So if our GDP is 10 trillion, we have a scope up to 10 trillion for private sector credit. Yes. Where today we are just shy of 4 trillion. Mm -hmm. Now people can say we are an African economy, we need to build. South Africa today is at 70% of GDP. Our lending today is at 45 to 50%. So there's some scope to grow, but it must be in a manner that is sustainable, it's affordable, and available to every customer. All right.